I have played some pretty scary Far Cry maps over the years, but nothing strikes fear into me quite like deep and open water. And since you, the followers of this channel, are such a caring bunch, you decided that should be the next theme for community creations. So join me as I showcase and review the top five maps for this watery theme and stick around to the end for some exciting news on the next edition of community creations. It's going to be a good one to take part in. The first map today is The Deep by MB1 Bumper and this is a Bioshock-esque underwater base that has some incredible detail both inside and out. Now the first thing that jumped out to me about this map is the lighting which is just gorgeous. You've got dark but visible underwater landscape stretching out into the distance and then you've got some really claustrophobic corridors with some cool lighting effects such as fan spinning and breaking up the shadows. The second thing I really liked about this map was just exploring its overall layout. There's so many really interesting spaces to find and fight in, and you can tell every single room has a very specific purpose, whether that's the bar, the sleeping quarters, the gardens. It makes it feel like a real authentic base and not just something that's being created for the sake of a video game. Then there are the smaller but really impactful details like the fish and octopus that are outside just about at every single window. Not only do they look really convincing, but it reinforces this sense of dread and that no matter where you are, inside or outside the base, you are in a super threatening environment. Now, no matter how good a map is, I always try to suggest some sort of improvement. And the only thing I've thought of for the deep is that the AI placement felt a little bit sporadic at times. There was no real set piece moment as such. But I'm really not sure if I like the idea of including a set piece either because then it goes against the very thing I was praising just moments ago, which is that authentic feeling to the whole map and scenario. I think personal preference will have a big sway in where you land on that discussion point. But one thing I'm sure we can all agree on is just the amazing and thick atmosphere this whole map has. It's one of the best underwater environments I have seen in any Far Cry map. It's really impressive how some of the existing assets have been repurposed to create a unique feel. Map number two today is Treasure Hunt by Herbrine, and this one embraced the theme 2AT with players needing to traverse both across the ocean waves and to my dismay, dive deep beneath them. Now the first thing I love about this map is the thumbnail. It's got a really good composition. You've got a flag in the foreground, the broader environment off in the background, and it also serves as a really nice vista for the start screen. I find thumbnails really hard to do for my map, so I always feel inspired when I see someone pull it off so well. Getting into the meat of the map though, it's got a really good layout. There's plenty to see and do, but it still has that sense of openness and exposure that I was hoping to see with these kinds of maps. There's loads of different environments from underwater towns to timber barges and islands. There's plenty to keep you occupied. The combat scenarios are also really interesting. Weapons and ammo are tight, so deciding whether to shoot from afar or go in hard and raid a barge is a really tricky decision, especially when you realize there's a lot more enemies than you thought. This map certainly keeps you on your toes. In terms of improvements, some of the islands fit a little bit on the flat side. I think some more terrain work would help bring them to life. But the thing I want to finish up on is that water is just such a critical part of the gameplay on this map. If you need weapons or ammo, you pretty much have to go diving. It's a constant risk first reward feeling, and it forces people like me to face their fears in the name of survival. If you were to ask me what is worse than the fear of deep or open water, I would say there is nothing worse. But then somebody like Karma Link chimes in and goes, ah, but there is deep and open water on an alien planet. And so he graces us with Astro Diver. The first thing I loved about this map was the world. It's got a bit of a subnautica vibe to it in the sense that the environment is somewhat Earth-like, but you can definitely tell it's alien at the same time. It lulls you into a false sense of security only for that to be shattered every few minutes by an alien surprise. I also really enjoyed the unique navigation on this map. You felt like you were exploring a place that just 
just wasn't meant for human beings. You're constantly looking for jumps, dives and climbs to help you progress. The only one that I found a little bit difficult to navigate was this one. It's a really awkward jump that was so tricky I wasn't even sure if I was following the right path forward. I won't get too specific for my recommendation as to not spoil this map for other players, but if you are a completionist be ready to act fast towards the end of this map or you could be robbed in the final moments which I found a little bit on the frustrating side. Overall though this map takes the award for best jump scares. There are some genuinely scary moments, my favourite being the blood dragon fairly early on. I don't think I've ever 180'd so fast in a Far Cry game before. Our second last map today is Sea of Pirates by Easy Company and this map is like a giant tribute to some of the greatest pirate games and movies that are out there. Normally I like to save my favourite thing about each map for last, but this point has to be addressed right away. This map has such a distinct handcrafted look that mimics Sea of Thieves so incredibly well and may I remind you, this is Far Cry. There's also innovation in the gameplay too. I really like this idea to use destructible generic shapes to simulate digging for gold. It was a really cool idea. And while this map may have a minimal look, it doesn't mean it's without detail. The underwater sections and the tall ships are spectacular with some great lighting to help bring it all home. My only recommendation is to swap out the ladders for grapple points. I feel like that would fit with the pirate theme a little bit more, but overall I just loved the vibe of this map. It's such a pleasure to play and the dark twist halfway through transforms the whole experience. It's a Pirates of the Caribbean and Sea of Thieves mashup that will have you coming back for more. The final map today is Adrift at Sea by MacCore Live, although he gives credit to the user Turtles for the incredible tall ship at the start of the experience. Now, I love the epic sense of scale on this map, from that ship that we just mentioned, to the island with cascading waterfalls, to the ocean all around you, this map makes you feel small. And I also love the use of music on this map, it's something all the creations used really well actually, but what I liked about it on this map is that there's extended periods of silence that allow you to take the world in and then also makes the music all the more impactful at those key moments where it does fade in. I also really enjoyed the scripting near the end. Mako always finds a way to play with creative scripting and this map is no different as you collect parts for a raft which constructs before your eyes. In terms of improvements, the only thing I spotted was a gap in the terrain just after the cave section which I didn't test but it looked like you might be able to get trapped down there so perhaps something to double check. But overall I just love that this map stuck to the theme and played with many water based fears whether that's sudden depths that come out of nowhere or claustrophobic caves or the sound of rushing water in a pitch black environment and of course the open ocean at the end. In fact nothing triggered my sense of fear quite like the final moments of this level so I'm glad in the nicest possible way that this was the last map I played. So they were the top five ocean and underwater theme maps. Thank you so much to everybody who took part. I feel like I can just never do these maps justice in a video so be sure to hop in and check them out for yourselves. There were some other maps that were also submitted for the showcase, you can find them on our Discord server. I couldn't include them because they either missed the deadline or just weren't available on Xbox, but please be sure to go over and show those maps some love as well. In terms of the next theme for Community Creations, it's going to be all about Halloween, a Halloween special, so it's a nice easy theme to interpret, all you have to do is try and scare my socks off. I'll release a proper theme announcement video in the near future with all the details including the closing date for submissions but hopefully this news helps you get building right away. Now because it's a Halloween special I want to do something a little bit extra and in addition to a proper showcase video like the one you've seen today I also want to do a live stream of at least my initial playthrough for some of the Halloween maps. Now I say I want to do that a 
and not promising it because I've got some work travel coming up in October. I'm really not sure where it's going to land in terms of timing and how that might all match up. But if I am in a position to do some live streaming of those initial playthroughs, I certainly hope to do so. I think it'll be a whole lot of fun and hopefully that gets you excited to build as well. But thank you so much for checking out this showcase. If you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe. And I hope you'll join me in a nearby live stream or another video very, very soon.